All right, it's recording. Here we go. This is exercise 12A. All the time. Let's settle down, let's settle down. Well, in general, I don't normally, I just go through the, the content and then I teach. All right, here we go. Listening. Year 12. So we're doing inverses. You need to know what is an inverse of a matrix, what is a determinant, and then condition for a matrix to have an inverse. There are three parts to it. This is all assuming that you've done the skills on multiplying matrices. So if you haven't done 11D or 11E or you don't remember that from last year, you should be practicing that now. Okay? Now, let's start off what you remember. Inverse matrix. What's an inverse matrix? Because we can go into really deep detail about it. You don't need it to know in that detail, but I do need you to know the very basics of what an inverse matrix is. Okay, so that is where the theoretical part comes in. So Daniel just said, he knows that if you multiply a matrix by its inverse, you get what he calls... The identity matrix. In your notes, shh, 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 listening, the reason why you need to know this part is because that second part there, condition of a matrix to have an inverse, if you don't understand what it is, you won't be able to do that third part. Okay, so I'll know most of you can go through the notes and you'll be able to do the inverse of a matrix. You'll be able to find the determinant. So most of you will be able to do those two. In order to do the next part, you have to understand the theoretical component. I'm not going to go through the actual detail. I'm just going to go through what you need to look for. Okay? So, first things first, you need to know what an identity matrix is. That's from 11A. So, 11A, you talked about types. What is an identity matrix again? What does it look like? Good. So, this is a typical example of an identity matrix. Why do you need to know an identity matrix? It's like your one in the number system. For example, if I got the number three and I said times one, what is it equal to? Three. So essentially, this times one doesn't do anything. There has to be a version when you create addition, subtraction, multiplication of matrices. It's a different technique. Therefore, there must be a technique that has this same idea. The identity matrix is what it is. If you take a matrix A, so let's say 0, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and you multiply this by 1, 0, 0, 1, you should get itself. So that's important, because if you can't do that, how are you going to solve matrix equations? So for example, back in number systems, this is how you would have done it. If I said 3x equals to 15, and I said, what is x? Okay, now I know I'm going a bit algebra here, but some of you should be able to kind of figure this out. I'm just going to write it differently. 3 times something equals 15. What's that number? What's the number? 5. Or you divide both sides by 5. Now this is key. You know the answer is 5, or you divide both sides by 3. You see, this part is so important in understanding the logic of this mathematics. You see, we know that 3 times 5 was 15. You can do that through trial and error. Or you can do an operation, which was divide 3. But where'd you get divide 3 from? You did the inverse of times. But what's important here is that when you divided it, what's 3 divided by 3? Itself, which is 1. This is the key part. You get 1. See, that 1 is very special because we know that when you times anything by 1, it's itself. That's why in the matrix system, you needed to know how to get the identity matrix because the identity matrix works the same way. You need, you're going to get a problem eventually where it looks something similar to what I just gave to you. You get something like this. So instead of 3 times magic box equals 15, you are going to get something like this. You'll get matrix A times matrix X is equal to matrix B. Your job is to find matrix X. They will tell you what matrix A is. Okay? 
Now, unlike your number system, you would have said, oh, well, since I did times three, I'll divide both sides by three. There is no division in matrices. That's why you needed to learn the inverse. But inverse can only exist or can only work for certain problems. That's why in this next one, where they talk about condition of a matrix, you need to understand what are the conditions. It's a very simple condition, but I'm just giving you the overview. Okay? So, let's start off. This is a fact that you need to copy down, so can you please copy down if you don't know what a matrix is? You need to first know an inverse matrix is labeled with a negative one. The aim is that when you do your matrix multiplication, if you take your A and you can find an inverse, so that's a key word there, can find. You don't always find an inverse, but sometimes when you do, that inverse, if you multiply those two, it should become an identity matrix. Now you can multiply both left side or right side, but remember in multiplication of matrices, there's only one correct way of doing it. Okay, so three times two is the same thing as two times three, but in matrices, it's not the same. A, B, and then matrix B, A are not the same. Okay, so this is what you should be copying down. So you should have A inverse times A, or A times A inverse should equal to the identity matrix. That's the first step. So in this example over here, when they say show that the matrices A, so they've got a matrix A, and B are inverses, the only way to show them that they're inverses is if you multiply them and they equal to their identity matrix, then yes, that is an inverse matrix. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start off with the first one. So we know this property. So this is what I asked you to copy down before. I said A times A inverse should equal to the identity matrix. Okay, now over here, I've got matrix A, and they're saying that matrix A and matrix B are inverses of one another. So that means if I multiply them, it should give me the identity matrix. So let's have a look. I'm going to do that now. We're going to multiply. So this is going back to 11D. For those who may have practiced or haven't practiced yet multiplication, I'm going to show you again. You got 2, 3, 3, 5. That's your matrix for A. You've got 5. Negative 3, negative 3, and 2. When you're doing multiplication matrices, how do you know if you can multiply them again? What do you need to check? What do you need to check to know if you can multiply them? Because that's from 11D. Very good. So I'm going to write out the first matrix. What is the order of this matrix? 2 by 2. So I've got a 2 by 2, and I've got a 2 by 2. So when you're checking, you have to check the column of the first is the same as the row of the second matrix. If they're the same, you can multiply. So now I, apparently I can multiply, and what's the resulting matrix going to equal? A two by two. So the resulting is the last, the first, so the row of the first and the column of the second. So I expect my matrix to end up being as well a two by two again. Now the reason why you need to know what type of dimension is can then you, when you multiply you remember how to do this technique. This is how I normally teach back in methods. I used to say if you want row 1, column 1 entry, which is this spot here, you'll be taking row 1 multiplied to column 1 entry. Okay, so if you want row 1, column 1 entry, then it's row 1 times column 1. Here we go. Let's work this one out. You've got 2, 3, times 5, negative 3. How do you multiply them again? Which ones do you multiply? Which numbers go with each? It's 11D. You have to know how to do this. This is the first beginner sort of introduction to matrices. 2 times 5. So the first of the row times the first of the column. It's always paired. First of the row and the first of the column. Second of the row times by the second of the column. Okay, so let's work that out. 2 times 5 plus 3 times negative 3. That goes into that first entry spot. So you got 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times, I mean 10 plus 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. So I know my matrix here should be 1 for that entry. Okay? Now if you work out the others, listening, 
If you work out the next few rows, you should find this should end up being an identity matrix. So you can see here, row one times column two, row one times column two, that's how you get row one column two entry. So if you multiply it, you should be multiplying two with the negative three, three with the two. So here we go. Two times negative three is negative six. Negative six plus three times two, which is another six, gives you zero. So you can see here, if you follow it, you should end up with an identity matrix. Okay, so that's the first example. So what you should be ticking off so far there is knowing what is the property of an inverse of a matrix? We know it's this property, A times A inverse equals identity matrix. Determinant. Now the exercise tells you to, they break it up for you. They teach you how to find the determinant and they say if this is your matrix, your determinant is A times D minus B times C. Okay, so if you're copying this down, this is the section that you'll be copying. Okay, so they're saying debt of A, that just means the determinant of A, is equal to whatever A is, so top left corner, multiply to bottom left corner, subtract top right corner, multiply to bottom left corner. Okay, so this is your determinant. So there's an exercise for you to find that value. The question is, why do you need to know that? Why do you need to know this formula? It's because it's related to this down here. So technically, you don't actually, I normally, when I teach it, I don't get you guys to memorize that bit, but I rather get you guys to memorize this bit. Okay, so what you see over here, I'm just gonna go down just so you can see. In the methods course, I explain in more detail as to what it is, but you just need to know one thing. You see right here, AD minus BC, that's your determinant. That's what they're actually getting you to focus. And the reason why that's so is because on your calculator, if you try one divided by any number, there's only one number in the whole system that it doesn't work. And I can show you on a calculator right now, we'll just do a calculator. You can do things like one divided by two, one divided by three, one divided by four, but the one thing you can't do is one divided by zero. If you type that in, it'll come up as cannot divide by zero. That's the only number in the number system that doesn't work in the real system, okay? And so, this is why when they ask you for the determinant, why are they asking you to find the determinant is because there's only one thing in this entire formula to find the inverse. This is the formula for the inverse that you need to memorize or write somewhere. That's your formula for the inverse. If that AD minus BC ends up being a zero, one divide zero doesn't work. What does that mean? It just means there's no inverse. Now I normally would then describe what that means in a graphical sense, you don't need to know that. You just need to know when can't that work. So in your job, what I want you to copy down is this. I'd rather you copy this section and understand this is your determinant. Right there, that's your determinant. If that equals zero, so right somewhere, so right here, if debt of A, so if debt determinant of A is equal to zero, inverse does not exist. So that ticks off your third component as part of your study design. Yep. As part of your study design, your AD minus BC, if it ever equals zero, that's the only time your inverse would not exist, meaning you can't solve it. Okay, so you only need an inverse to solve. In this particular case, that's all you needed to know. So if we go back to your study design, there are three things there. Listening. Thank you, team. We've got A inverse, determinant. Determinant was A, D minus B, C. But when, what's the condition? Determinant of A cannot equal to zero. That's the condition. So those are the three things they want you to know. So as you're doing the exercises, if I picked uh, an example, let's say this one here. Okay, so they're saying use the rule 
to find the inverse. So I'm going to go down here. Here we go. Using the rule, find the inverse of the matrix. <coughs> First thing you get it, got to do is to find out, well, is there an inverse to begin with? So how do you do that? Look at your rules again. It is 1 over AD minus BC. And you can see that the matrices swap D to A, negative B, negative C. So if I write it down again, just so you can see and refer. Inverse matrix is equal to 1 over AD minus BC multiplied to the matrix of D, A, negative B, negative C. This is your rule. You don't need to waste your time to figure out the matrix unless you need to check one thing. You need to check, will it have an inverse? If A times D minus BC equals zero, there's no point figuring it out. It doesn't exist. That's the condition of an inverse matrix. So, what's our matrix so far? In part A, they tell you that A is equal to 2, 2, 3, and 4. So if I wanted to find out if this has an inverse or not, I should start off by searching what the determinant of A equals to. Determinant of A, they said it's A times D. So this is my A, that's my D. A times D minus B times C, that's all I'm doing. So I'm doing A times C, D, so 2 times the 4, minus B times the C, which is 2 times the 3. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 2 times 3 is 6, that equals the 2. So you're fine. Anything divided by 2 is okay. You can't do 1 divided by 0. So if that ever equals to 0 straight away, you can say inverse does not exist. So now, when you're answering the question, what's the inverse? Well, follow the formula. Inverse was 1 over AD minus BC, which we figured out to be 2. The inverse matrix, D, which is currently 4. B is still the same, but it's a negative, so negative 2. And 3 is C, so it's negative 3. And then finally, the 2. That's your inverse matrix. So it means that if you took this matrix on your calculator, which I'll show you, you take this and you multiply it to this, it should equal to 1001. That's the purpose. This should be undoing everything that you wrote here. Everything that you put here, this reverses the whole process. That's what it is. That's what an inverse will do. Okay, but you always need to check, does the inverse exist? If it equals zero, it doesn't. So that means you can't do this. This step doesn't even exist. So then you ignore it. So that's the condition. So in the dot point, one point, I forgot which one, 1.2, that dot point there has three conditions. You need to know what is an inverse, which is the identity matrix, B, what is the determinant, and then C, what's the condition of that inverse. So I've just went through three of them. Okay, so that, that's how you do it. So I'm going to show you on a CAS how to find the inverse again. For those who aren't very CAS uh, orientated, which most of you are, by the way, but uh, for those who aren't, I'm just going to quickly show you how would we have done this on a CAS without doing it by hand because you're in further mathematics, we're going to be very proficient with our CAS work to go through the exam really quickly. So I'm going to show you how would you have found the A inverse function, which is what I have here, on your CAS quickly. Okay, so let's do this together once this loads up. Grab out your CAS if you have it with you and then we're going to do one quick example and I'll give it to you as your um, give your time to, to other work on whichever exercise you're up to. So I'm going to go to calculator. Here we go. I'm going to make this a bit larger. All right. So our matrix. This is what we've got. In your number nine, you have this button next to number nine, which is the commonly used button. Okay. So that's your frequently used icons. So I'm going to go here. You can see that on the on the icons, I can go to two by two. Well, I can go to 3x3. Three three. The 3x3 three three means you can customize your own matrices. This one, I know I'm doing a 2x2. Two two. So I'm going to open up a 2x2. Two two. The matrix was 2, 2, 3, 4. So here we go. 2, tab 2, tab 3, tab 4. Okay? What I want you to do is to practice storing it. Now, I don't know how many of you have practiced with store, but I'm going to show you here. Control variable. Okay, can you see that control variable? So control variable gives you an arrow. Control variable gives you an arrow. So what you're doing there is you're storing, shh, shh, listening, 
You're storing that matrix into something, and I want you to store it into the letter A. Okay, so when you put it into a letter A, this now keeps you in reference that every time you type the letter A, it's like typing the matrix. So that means later on you can play around with that. If they said, take the inverse of A, or get A to add C, or add B, whatever it is, it's much easier to type than typing the matrix over and over. So first step is to store. Okay, once you store it, now if you want to find the inverse, it literally is A to the power of negative one. So the power is this button over here, negative one. And that's exactly what I've got. Now I know it looks slightly different because they times the half to every one of the terms. So I'm just going to show you the comparison here. And I'm just going to minimize this a bit smaller. Can you see that's actually the same? Half of four is two. Half of negative three is negative three on two. Half of two is one. And half of negative two is also negative one. 